Next up, we have Alex Gibson with Translow. Alex, is, Alex Gibson is a taxpayer and product manager at Translow in Durham. So welcome. All right, so how's everybody doing this evening? That's great, thank you. So uh, my name is Alex Gibson, as Bonner said, and I am in fact a taxpayer at Raleigh, North Carolina. And I'm also a product manager at Translook Incorporated in Durham, North Carolina. And uh, talk about how mass transit's failing you, and arguably more importantly, what we're gonna do about that. So uh, Translook's history is sort of sort of brief. Uh, founded in Raleigh, North Carolina about 10 years ago. And for the majority of the time we've been in business, we've basically helped transit riders answer one final question, which is where's my bus? And when is it arriving? As you can see, we have a number of rider-facing apps that basically help transit riders get more out of their transit experience. And in the last few years, we've realized that we could do a lot more with all the problems facing mass transit. And a lot of the problems facing mass transit, ones that are facing cities, started by congestion, we talked about population density, all these things. There's problems that transit can solve. And nowhere is this more apparent than in the world of Uber. Uber's a five-year-old company and they're worth $50 billion. And if Uber's taught us anything, it's that we have to think differently about how people move through cities and think differently about the problems associated with mobility. So I am lucky enough to live in downtown Raleigh and I work at RTP and I get to commute every single day up Wade Avenue. And I took a picture this morning of what Wade Avenue looked like. This is uh, approximately what Wade Avenue is pretty much every morning. And I'm not blaming congestion on mass transit. It is absolutely not the point, but congestion is a fact of urban life. and. Uh, it's just something we have to deal with, and mass transit is, is the you know sort of a mechanism for solving it. Unfortunately, we think about mass transit like this. You've heard of a dumpster fire. This is a bus fire. So it leverages right into the bad of mass transit. So this right here is what 100% fare box recovery would look like. And this is about 25% fare box recovery. Excuse me. Thank you. I went to college, so that's good. <laughs> and basically what that means is that taxpayers are filling in the empty part of this last to the tune of $42 billion a year. Basically, transit agencies are exceptionally unprofitable. In fact, no transit agency in the entire United States, not even New York or Chicago, the really, really good ones, operated higher than 45% fare box recovery. Zero. Where I come from, 45% is a fake grade. Not only that, but only 30% of jobs in metropolitan areas across the U.S. are accessible via mass transit within 90 minutes. Obviously, this is a huge problem. Just about everybody in this room is what we can classify as a choice rider. We have choices. We have cars. We can afford Ubers, some stuff like that. But a large percentage of the population that doesn't have that choice, dependent transit riders. If you can imagine someone that does not have a car, can't afford a car, how are they going to get to a job which is going to take them 90 minutes, especially if only 30% of those jobs are available? So not only are we talking about solving congestion problems, we're talking about solving economic problems, social upward mobility, so to speak. Now, despite all of this, public transit is supported over 70% of the time. A higher percentage of Americans support mass transit than support Social Security and Medicare. That's gigantic, right? We think about these things as sort of immovable institutions. Even more people think transit's the same way. And much of that money goes to pay for beautiful things like this, the sort of new Durham Transit Center. It's awesome, it's innovative, it does, does great work for the landscape, and it's very well used. And this is the good of mass transit. Last year, there were 10.8 billion trips on mass transit in the United States, by far more than there have ever been. More people ever are riding mass transit. And people living in car-dependent neighborhoods tend to die four years sooner than those that don't. Now, you can sort of argue about the health benefits associated with walking or things like that, but 86% of millennials also take public transit into account when determining where to live. No matter how you slice it, mass transit plays a gigantic role in uplifting our society and making our lives better. So how are we going to do this? We're going we're gonna, to uh, use data. Uh, hooray for data. So not this data, although my father would be very proud of me for putting a Star Trek character in my presentation, but we're going to use this data. And I can never find a slide that actually shows data, so I just went like super jobsy and put nothing on this slide. But this is a very rudimentary example. We know where people live. And not only that, but leveraging the power of our applications, we know exactly how people are moving through cities. For example, we can dispatch a bus before people actually need it. 
We can tell exactly where the need's gonna be, and we can send uh, vehicles there. The solution is not additional infrastructure. It's better utilization of existing infrastructure. And the great part about infrastructure is you can replace it with software. Fast Company thought we were doing so well, they decided to write a uh, post about how we are building an app to help public mass transit compete with Uber. Uh, that's a grand vision, and uh, we'd like to get there. We're Transit. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks. Exciting stuff.